Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Ah, Naaman. Naaman, Naaman, Naaman. He is so reflective of us. And if you don't know the story of Naaman, it was in the readings today, in the first reading and in the gospel. So Naaman was a leper, and he went to Elisha for healing. And Elisha said, go into the Jordan and dunk in it seven times. And Naaman was ticked off because he's like, look, there's a bunch of rivers right here that are a lot cleaner than that Jordan. Why do I have to go there to get healed? And finally, he was convinced, hey, do what God says. And so he did, and he came out clean. And then in the gospel, Jesus was sharing with people locally in his own town about the fact that not everyone was healed. Back in those days, there were many lepers. It was only Naaman. And he had mentioned something else about a widow with with, uh, Elijah. But his point was, I believe what's sitting with me is it takes our cooperation with God to heal. And sometimes it's harder than we think. And sometimes if we are that person who is trying to bring people to Jesus, to tell them that that's where the healing begins and ends, right? (laughs) The beginning and the end, the alpha, the omega. It is Jesus that we must do what Jesus asks us to do in his commandments. Perhaps maybe it's explaining how important sacraments are in the Catholic Church, and yes, we must go to confession. I believe that today we need to really think about how we are cooperating with God for healing not only in our own life, but just like Jesus, they were so mad at him for basically saying, look, hey, only one was healed. You know, here I am in front of you guys and none of you are healed (laughs) kind of thing. Almost like pay attention. It's not happening very often in the place that you live because you're not cooperating with God. And I think a lot of us in our own families have family members that we might be struggling with in a relationship, perhaps. Maybe it is exactly around faith, where you've got kids that aren't practicing. Maybe you have a spouse that isn't practicing. I have one. And we are challenged to live our faith in our families in a different way. It's harder. We have to cooperate with God. And that means what are we doing ourselves to cooperate with God's healing? Are we doing our best every day to give God our first fruits to spend that silent time with him, worshiping him, loving him, asking him into our heart? Or are we waiting until later? Or maybe not at all. And then we wonder, why did I just snip at my husband? 
Why did I just say that to my wife? How come I'm a little indignant to my kids or even my neighbors? It's the people that we are around the most. That's the most challenging to live our faith. Especially with beliefs as well. What if, as the world turns around us, that your family doesn't believe the certain things about what's going on in the world? Politics, culture, they don't see the evil right in front of their face and they just don't want to talk about it. Maybe that's frustrating too. But we are still called and honestly more called to those in our family to love them where they are and to be love to them, which is being patient and kind. I think we, we can complicate. That's the word. That's the C word I was looking for. We complicate love in our mind. Because we want people to do things and we want people to believe things. And when they don't, we might even take that personally. Geez, why can't I? Someone who's on fire for my faith, someone who sees truth everywhere, sees evil everywhere. Why can't I convert that? person? Why can't they see what I see? And then we make it a personal challenge. Yes, we need to continue to speak truth, but we must do it with love. We must not attack. We must not judge. And we also need to cooperate with God. And that means going back to the root of our life, the two greatest commandments. And if we do not sit with God and aren't giving ourselves to him every single day, it's going to be a lot more difficult. There is no question about it. We won't love ourselves. We certainly won't love others. And we must cooperate with God as well on this walk during Lent. We're in the third week. How are you doing out there? Is what you chose to do as a sacrificial offering to God still for, in the forefront of your life, first and center? And if it is something that you've fallen on and fallen on and fallen on, that is okay. Just get up again because guess what? If you keep falling, that means this, whatever it is, has a stronghold on you. And you should be focusing on this. But we also must look to God and see what he is asking of us. So if you're falling, sorry, I have a bird outside my window. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is loud. (laughs) It's actually distracting me, but it's beautiful because it's spring and everything's coming to life. And that's what I want you to look at Lent like, that this is a time where we come to life. Hopefully we turn this corner of healing with God and we have worked on that healing together. We've gone in the valley with him. We've hit the mountain top. Maybe this is all happening within this week of Lent. Maybe you've had a great day, an awesome day, and you knew you had that great, awesome day because you had God in it. Maybe you had a really bad day and you fell four, five, six times on that same thing. And if you looked back, you realized, oh, huh, I didn't even think about God today. It's really important to reflect and make sure that we can bring God into our life. We live in this crazy world. We live in this evil world. 
And we must be not only the beacon of light and truth, but the beacon of love and acceptance. And it's really hard when we see others not living a way that they should or not believing what they should, not doing what they should, which is cooperating with God. So we can be that witness. When we fall, let's publicly state it. That's the reason why I go to confession all the time is because I am more aware of my venial sins, not my mortal sins. I mean, I'm not committing those mortal sins is basically what I'm saying. Thank you, God. I am past that, but I have fallen. And you all know I could fall tomorrow. I could be tempted tomorrow, no question. I could be tempted today. But I know because God told me through his sacraments, go to confession. So this week was a week and a half because I thought confession was at a particular parish on Wednesday and they moved it to Tuesday and Thursday, which is why I tell you, (laughs) look online, look in the bulletin, And make sure you know what's going on because they change things up and it's not always on masstimes.org. So I went on Saturday and I was so grateful because it was bothering me what I was going to confession about. And I think today we have quick judgment We get resentful. There's a lot of division out there, a lot of polarization. Some people have no clue. Maybe what you believe or what you have uncovered about what is going on in the world, and it's difficult to speak that truth. But I'm going to tell you, the more that you pray with God, the more that you cooperate with him, there will be healing not only within your life, but healing with others around you. Because you have cooperated and have also been that witness. I came home, I felt so wonderful. And I just told my husband, I am so blessed with that sacrament. And I honestly need him to go because he's supposed to go once a year. So I have to invite him. And I want to invite him this Lent so that we could go to Easter together. Who knows? Maybe that's the turning point and he goes from that point forward. I got to give that to God. I have to cooperate with God's plan. Keep praying, right? It's a process. I don't know when God and Jesus and Mary, really, I look to those two, when they're going to do something. All I know is I've surrendered him to them and I'm just going to love him where he's at. And I need God for that. I mean, I love, love, love him, but we don't exactly see things the same in the world, nor do we care about the same things in the world. We're getting there, and I see God in action, and I think that that's also something that we need to take stock of. Let's look at how God's worked in our life. Just because my husband isn't going to Mass doesn't mean that I'm not seeing God in his life in a big way, in our marriage in a big way. So it's helpful for us to also pay attention and really look at God's healing actions. Because something is happening. We just get too busy to stand back and watch and look and observe, reflecting, right? That's, that's truly important. And so many of us don't do that. And when we don't do that, we don't learn. And we can't see God in action. So not, let's not be like Naaman and whine about our life, whine about our faith, Whine about how God isn't making things easy on us. Why aren't we healed? Why isn't this person healed in my life? 
because sometimes healing takes time and there's a reason God just doesn't snap his fingers and cause miracles in our lives. There must be something that we need to keep working on. Maybe it is that surrender. Because if we're having that constant conversation with him about what we want on our time and we don't surrender to his will, how do you do that? You say this, Lord, whatever your petition is, I really want my husband to come back to mass. I want him to come back to the church. That's my desire. You know my heart. So please, Lord, If it be your will, please make it happen as fast as you can. My prayer also is, Lord, please bring truth to the world fast because we need it. But there's a reason that God isn't doing things fast. And again, we don't understand his ways. So it comes back to that surrendering to his will. Only if it's your will, God, do I want this. Because I know if it's not your will, it's not your plan. It's my plan. Don't forget to be patient, but be persistent. So keep that prayer up. Keep going to God. There's no reason you should stop. But make sure that Your prayer aligns to his will by saying only if it's your will. And maybe you need to ask the Lord. Well, I know you do. Not maybe. Always ask the Lord to change your heart because we all need our hearts changed to love people in our own families, just like Jesus, as he told everyone, hey, there were lots of lepers, but only Naaman was healed. And they were going to throw him off the edge and kill him because they were really mad. Most often, even with Jesus, the people in our own families, our own communities who know us the best are the ones that challenge our faith the most. So where is it that you are being lazy or where you aren't cooperating with God in your own life and in how you love yourself and you love your neighbor. And it's all going to stem from that time that you give God, that time that you sit in silence, hearing his voice by him putting thoughts in your mind, on your heart, giving you that peace He will rise to your eyes what you need to work on. But if you don't sit in that silence with him, you are running your life yourself. You're not cooperating with God. And the healing is almost like your will. You're willing it yourself. And in some cases, we can do some things, right? We could... We could watch what we eat. We can exercise. We could see our body healing. We do have some capabilities to physically heal, but spiritually and having our hearts change, that's God. So let's reflect. Let's go back. Let's start giving God our first fruits. And let's align our prayers with his will, his timing. Let's not cut any corners, right? Let's do what the church tells us we must do in order for that healing and forgiveness. I will scream confession one more time. If you have not been, or even if it's been a week, even if it's been a couple days, I remember there was one time I was really intense with the Lord and I was going every other day because I was trying to let go of my control. And it was very difficult. And I was getting resentful by the timing of things. While they're not mortal sins, confession for me is my cleaning of my spirit. 
me speaking out loud to a priest in persona Christi who is Jesus and telling Jesus, I want to be better. I need your healing. I need this sacrament. I need this church. I need the Eucharist every day. I need to be cleansed of my worldly thoughts, my worldly ways, the brainwashing that I've been under for 51 years of my life. I need your healing. And Lord, I will cooperate. I will do what you ask me to do. And I will be patient and kind with myself, with you, and with others. All righty, everyone. I love you all. Go find something more with God. Have a blessed and inspired day.